jaw, relaxing the eyeballs. Lean back slightly on your heels while letting the weight spread through the feet. And calling and collecting your energy into this moment. And leaving outside whatever is not having anything to do with our yoga practice. Placing your tongue on the palate. And the drishti or the gaze is towards the tip of the nose with the closed eyes. That's another way that we harness our focus to stay concentrated. Take a moment to create an intention. I always love this, the intention to gather energy, to restore my energy, to refresh. And then stepping the feet apart, hop. And we just start jumping it out, jumping and shaking. Moving and grooving. <laughs> Letting go of the world. And coming into your own inner reality. You can shake now or jiggle. We need movement through the whole body. Maybe jiggling those places that you don't, <laughs> that you don't like to jiggle. <laughs> and then feet together, like why is that jiggling? Feet together and thumping heels, bump, bump, bump. Releasing old, stale chi from wherever it might be lodged in your body. And then feet apart and we hold. Gently hold. Already we have a sense of our chi field, our energy field. We can already feel it. Let me know if that's too loud, Muktabai. Yeah. Okay, knocking on the door of life. So we had a great class last night. It was very small and intimate, but we did some fun things, so we might do something similar. As usual, we spent a long time getting warmed up. But I think it's better to just work into everything slowly. So swing and tap. Be sure you're tapping the Ming Men at the lower back. and you're tapping the hip bone in the front. Shoulders are relaxing, you just throw the arms. Looking over the shoulder. switch to the shoulders nest, the little dip, right underneath the head of the shoulder.
Silver's Nest, and Ming Men. Two more. Last one. Unwind that slowly. And swing and throw. Just like we did last night. Swing in front of the face and throw the bucket of water over your shoulder, looking at the wall behind you. Just a nice feeling. This is a full body movement. Everything par participates. There's a little bounce. And it's a nice feeling of twist through your torso. Be sure you take the bounce in your legs. Two more. Last one. And flap it out. And let's feel the after effects of those two movements. Or something will be reverberating through you already. Good, interlace, press up to the top, big inhale, 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 stretch and open, look left, and hop, swing and release, and stretch, 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 inhale, this is great for people who is 7 a.m., right, and hop, this is about like all I can do at 7 a.m., Inhale, press, 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 press. Open, 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 hop. And press, 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 press. Big inhale, open, and hop. up, exhale, we'll bring down the heavens, and we're going to go to sitting. Like I said, this can be very similar to yesterday, at least in the beginning part. We're going to come all the way down. Now, if it's too early for you to squat, then you can skip that part. We'll just come down to the mat in any way we can. So we're in a sitting position. You can sit in simple cross legs. I'm going to sit in lotus because it's comfortable for me. But you guys will probably be in either half lotus or sukhasana, which is also known as easy pose. Ear, shoulder. Nice long neck.
last one. And then before we go to the rotation, we're going to tap, tap our kidney 27 points. This is another good waker upper. I'm using this knuckle of my thumb. It's a very sharp tapping tool, very precision. Then I'm going to tap my spleen 21 at the bra line. And then my sternum. Right hand goes to the navel, left hand. Fingers go above and below the lips and rub these points. The navel point just holds, but the two fingers rub the points at the gum, of, which is the conception and govern, governing vessel ending points. And then we hold. Beautiful. And now we'll take the rotation. And you can look to the side and take the chin all the way up and around. Always respecting your own limits while at the same time gently challenging them. Other way. Last one. Bring the hands to Namaste and just neutralize that rotation for a second. Neck rotations can be a big deal for people. So if that's you, just let yourself stabilize here. And then we'll go into this wrist circle. Fingers will wrap over the thumbs and we'll take it around the wrists. Rolling around the bracelets. Which are the little lines separating the wrist, the hand from the arm. And reverse. Last one. Up and over the top. Nice long side bend. Super long between top, uh, top of the pelvis and the last rib, which is the floating rib. And then other way. Get longer, get taller.
and we turn. We're going to lie down. Now, if you, um, Aunt Michelle, I hope you have a, uh, maybe you have a brick. If you don't have a brick, maybe you have a firm pillow, but we do sometimes use that in this segment of class. So first we're just... I might need a brick, but she has some pillows, I think. Yeah, a firm pillow could also work. First we're going to just hug the knees. Just soften through the inner hip crease as we relax the shoulders and the jaw. Notice if the shoulders want to just hurt. Just notice that. And then begin to slowly circle your hips. And this is one of the really cool things that we can train when we do our asana practice is the witness. We can be, do this kind of witness consciousness thing or we witness like, wow, what does my body like automatically do? without my knowing it, you know? Like, does my jaw clench? Does my, um, do my shoulders, you know, do I have a lot of tension in my shoulders? All this stuff. We get to watch. And then the poses are like these special key codes that will, can correct that. Let's go the other way. Great. And then both arms and legs come up. We did this last night. I thought it was really fun. We're going to just rotate everything at once. Multitaskers dream. Two wrists, two ankles, nice big circles. Other way. And here you can start training, you can start thinking about that teacups, which is likely in your future. To start. <laughs> We're on a new kick with this teacups thing, Kristen. It's starting to go well, actually. Woo! Two more. Are you guys feeling this? I'm feeling it in my uh, shins, big time. Last one. Supta Baddha Konasana. Let's just plug in. So we put the two soles of the feet together. Okay. Now this isn't just like an arbitrary thing. This is a circuit. With the soles of the feet together, we're closing the circuit, and then we put the hands on the low belly, we really lock it up. So we're just circulating our own chi in a way that nothing's leaking. Relax your neck again if it tensed up. Mine did. And then bring the feet to standing. Arms can come out to the side. Little touches. Hold on. In that navel, lower back goes down. If you want to make it more challenging, you can put your arms up overhead. And if you want to make it even more challenging, you can reach your toe out farther. I'm just going to press my lower back down, my lumbar spine, and I'm going to just have my arms out to the side. This feels really good to me. Just tiny little touches.
two more. And last one. Okay, Supta Baddha Konasana. Okay, so I, I have to make a correction here um, because of what something that I saw um, on the screen. So if you just look, if you just look for a second, so we're not doing this, okay? This is kind of a nothing. We're doing this. You see the difference? We're reaching the toe away. We're not just flapping the feet in the air. Does that make sense? Okay, we're not going to do it again, but just, I, I saw some, somebody was, was flapping, so. I just want to clarify. Okay, now we get to flap. <laughs> so the legs are going to come up. They're going to stay straight this time. The navel's going to go down. The lower back's going to go down. And here we do get to flap. But we're going to flap with straight legs. This is also called the scissor. But tonight we can call it the flap. Now please keep your lower back down, your navel down to the spine, and just hover your heel any amount. You don't have to take it down all the way. You only take it so far down that you can keep your back down and your navel nice and snug. Challenge yourself to straighten your knees by firming up your quads. Woo! Anybody feeling this? Yeah, the key to affirm the quads was a good one. Okay, very good. You know, you just never know what correction is going to work for what person. Whew, okay. Supta Baddha Konasana. And then feet come standing. As a resting pose, we're going to do the figure four. So reach under. So I'm doing my inside leg, reaching under. Inside leg is the leg closest to your device. And hug. So we're feeling this right here in the top of the hamstring, deep lateral hip rotators. Keep your shoulder relaxed and your knee away from the shoulder. If you feel any discomfort in this knee, this foot has to flex, and that will stabilize the knee. Great. So that outside foot comes down. Now the inside foot is just going to roll right over. Sole of the foot is just going to come right to the floor. We're in a little spinal twist. It's giving a lot of length through my lower abdomen, my sacrum. I can feel that lengthening there. It feels really nice. Bring it up and switch your rope. Outside leg crosses over the inside leg. Reach under and through and hug. Relaxing the shoulders.
Okay, bring that foot down and then this up leg foot comes just right to the floor. It just, it's just like timber. Boom. Boom. You're in the twist. Michelle, can you hear us? All right. Excellent. Bring it back up. Supta Baddha Konasana. And then inside leg will come straight up to the sky. Nice straight leg, arms are out to the side, big circle. I think this is this very similar to what we did last night. I'm repeating it because I liked it. Hopefully the others liked it too, because here it is again. Nice big circle. Keeping that leg as straight as you can. And then going the other way. Last one. Wow. And switch. Outside leg comes up. Big, enormous circle. at the top because I'm having wall issues here. So that's why I'm doing that funny thing with my foot. And then going the other way. Wonderful. Close that off. And we're going to go right into reverse bicycle on the brick. Let your legs scoot out and bring it up and around. That's right. A little slower. Everyone slow it down one notch.
Last one. And we're going to go right into seahorse without taking a break. So inside foot goes on the outside shin. Touch the heel and lift. If you need to take a rest, go ahead. We'll still be doing it. <laughs> Check you guys out. You guys are getting so strong. Except I can't see Kristen, but I know she's strong, so. I think it's just because you have a little, little rectangle. Woo! One more this side, then we switch. Yikesers. And change. Inside foot goes on the outside shin. Take it up and down. Eccentric contraction. It, well, that's what this is called. I'm not making it up. It's an eccentric contraction of the psoas, which means that the muscle is contracting while it's in extension. So it's actually a very special exercise. Two more. That's why I gave it a very special name. It might be called something else. I don't know, but it's like a seahorse to me. Last one. Ho! Supta Baddha Konasana. Pull the heels in tight. Reach under and grab the ankles if you can. You see how I'm reaching right under like that? I think I see Christmas lights. Great. Just feeling that blood, that chi, everything circulating through your belly. Total lower abdomen. Feels good. Please remove the brick. Let's take our bridge rolls, pressing up and down at your own pace. Just rolling up the spine, driving the heels into the floor and lift. Rolling down one vertebra at a time. This is the counter pose to all that belly work. You press your heels in, you feeling your glutes start to fire. Going at your own pace. Maybe your pace is slower than mine. That's totally fine. Maybe it's faster. It's important to let your yoga be yours. It's not anybody else's. Okay, last one. We're going to stay. Press. I'm going to walk my shoulders underneath. Lift my sternum up. From the back of the heart, I'm going to suck that vertebra in. you got a vertebra that's right behind your heart. I believe it's T4. Suck that vertebra in deep and lift. One, two, three. Amazing. Lower down. Pull the heels in, arms out, and... Little cute twist, except this is going to be the dynamic. So keep your heels into your bum and just go back and forth a couple of times. We do a lot of churning in my class. Churning is in what in yoga they call chala. It's dynamic. 
This is one reason why we want to be empty, empty tummy, because we want to churn our organs and our energy. We don't, <laughs> we don't necessarily want to churn our food in our stomach, right? Okay, next time you go toward the device, just hold for a second. One, two, three, and other way. Take your knees over, hold it. One, two, three. Okay, one final Baddha Konasana before we get back up. Great, he comes standing. Here's your moment. Grabbing under the knees. Rolling up. Hands behind and hop. Okay, move to bar. Hi, Deva. Great, toe balance. I'm a one trick pony. Okay, ready? One, two, and press it up. Okay, there's Krista. Great, step the feet apart. Hip circles. Right from the lower down chin, stirring the pot. More churning, 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 churning. And then adding the wrists when you're ready. So I'm starting my rotation, how my body just starts automatically is pinky comes, I'm coming in toward the center. Pinky comes in, it goes behind, and then it flares around. This is it. My knees are relatively straight. I'm taking it all in the abdomen. And reverse. Reverse the hands. Same movement, just go the other way. And reverse the direction of the hips. Great, bring it to a pause and we'll hold our chi field for a second. Knees are bent, elbows are bent, tailbone is dropping, kidney is open, chin is retracted, jaw is relaxed and feel.
something in you is still churning. Exhale, press it down. And here we go. Let's start with our right hand. Got a cup of tea, okay? It's nice black Sri Lankan tea, okay? Hot. Don't spill it. Here we go. Ceylon tea. only one way you can move your arm in a spiral without spilling the tea. going you can see how you have you not that you have to but you your whole body participates it's integrating movement that's my point Last one. Legs a little wider this time and hold and feel. down to the earth, bringing down the heavens once, and right into the wave. Yeah. 
organic movement, the body knows how to do it. It's just, you know, we're not conditioned to move organically. We've been conditioned to move like robots. So it's, it's like, it, this is the point, you know, we're in the Kali Yuga, right? You've got to learn how to be natural. <laughs> it's looking good. Two more. Okay, last one. Okay, grounding that out. You guys are doing amazing. Interlace, so feet are all the way together. Interlace, pull the hands up. And we make these circles. The knees will bend at the bottom. When the hands come down, the knees bend. When the hands go up, the knees straighten. So it's more of this holistic movement. Big integrator, upper to lower body integrator. Try to take it in your front spine muscles and not your back, and then go the other way. Last one, pausing up at the top, inhale, let yourself be an antenna, and then pull it all the way down the center line, fingertips turn down, and holding the energy right below the navel in Hakini Mudra. All the fingers and the thumb are touching. Tongues to the palate. Gaze is gently toward the tip of the nose with closed eyes. together, knees together, thighs fired up. Other way. Woo. Last one, feet apart and forward fold. swing or you can just hang whatever your body wants but please try to have your knees straight here if possible
Round two, the Charleston. Take it around at your own pace. Nice big circles, try to get weight in the heel, spreading the weight through the feet. Go the other way. Woo, we're finally getting to the end of the warm-ups. Crazy, isn't it? Last one. Feet wide. Press arena. Hey. Great, heels in, toes out, hands to the top, tracing up, inhale, coming all the way up. Hands coming down, and then with a nice wide stance, arms come out, we'll do this crossing the toe touch tonight. So my back is flat, my bum kind of sticks out behind me, and I cross over and touch my opposite heel. Dynamic. Try to keep weight in this heel, in the bent legged heel. Okay, so we're not bending over with the back at all. The back stays flat. All, the only thing that bends is this leg, this knee. That's what bends. Back is flat. Two more. And then the next time we go to the right, that left hand is going to come down to the inside of the foot. Hand comes to the heart, extend to the sky, twist and breathe. One, two, three, and switch. Back is straight. Nice straight back. The only thing that's bent is this right leg. One, two, three. Great, bring it back up. And into horse. Right in. Is anyone feeling like this is work? Ooh, I'm sweating. Okay, very good. Coming on up, inhale, all the way up. And exhale. Just slide your back down an imaginary wall. So you do not stick your, stick your derriere out at all. Up and down. Control. Nice big inhale brings you up, exhale brings you down. You want to make sure that this knee tracks over the second toe. Don't let it come to the inside of the big toe, that's a no-no. It's a no-no for the knee-knee. Stay and 
way. Weight into the heels. Keep it in the heels. You're a happy, happy knee. Amazing. Press. Inhale. Exhale. Turn the toes in. Spread wide like a star. Interlace the hands behind the back. So just do the best you can. I know this is a little bit of a hard stretch, but do the best you can. Come forward with your hands interlaced, taking the head over. Two straight legs. Toes pointed straight forward. This is our last standing forward bend. Well, maybe that's not true. One, two, three. Back off the arms. Hands come down to the floor. We jump. Uh, let's take Thai Angel before we go into Child. Go right in. To our up dog. It's not really up dog yet. The last one we do will be up dog, but just you know what I mean. Start rolling. Really working this wave, right? The spinal wave rounds forward, then the sacrum drops, the chin lifts, inhale. Knees are still down at this point. It's all in the spine. This is good, Robert. Okay, I really want you to start putting your consciousness right in your spine. Because there's a lot of movement. That we have the capacity for, but that we don't tend to use. Okay, last one. Tuck the chin, rolling and rounding, and then at the top, lift the chin, tuck the toes, and lift the legs. Tonight we'll add, we'll do the, what is it, the dragon breath. And stretch your tongue out, exhale through the mouth. Wow.
and then coming back. Uh, let's just sit in my Dukasana for a second. So that move, what we're doing is we're stretching these, they call the sinews. We're stretching these attachments. Actually, they're attachments to the tongue. And it loosens not only the entire throat area, but there's a reflex action to the uh, connective tissue throughout your body. That's why they do that. It's not just because they want to be like, you know, provocative. <laughs> that they're going, <sighs> it's actually, it's actually, there's a function, a reflex function in your body that's happening from that. Okay. Let's come back to downward facing dog. Navel presses back and in. And then we'll come to plank and we'll do our ekapada sequence. So firm, nice firm plank, and then lift that one leg after the other. It's okay if your bottom heel comes off. Keep going. And then just two more. in Vajrasana, to sit on the heels, we'll stabilize here, I wish I could know how Michelle is doing, Michelle can you hear us?
Okay, so I think we're going to have to do that first side again because that really wasn't a go. That was a demo. So we'll just do a short round. So come to plank, your first leg, bring it in, and touch, lift, touch, lift, three, lift, four, lift, last one, five, and skid it through to a half of a knee, back toe tucks, looking up. Nice big long opening. Great. Okay, we're going to step back into child's pose. Just fold through, and I have to check our time, and I have a feeling I know what I'm going to be seeing. Okay, this is how we're going to have to come out of this, rolling up, crossing the ankles behind you, sitting down, and coming into Dandasana. So the time issue is worse than I thought. But we'll go five minutes over because it took us a while to get started because we talked. Okay, so we have to do another twist. So let's bring in that inside leg. And my outside arm, I'm going to wrap it around. This is it. My other hand will come behind. I'm going to lift my heart, lift my chest. Looking over the shoulder. Wow, it's amazing. We got less done than we did last night. I'm not sure what happened, but. But it doesn't matter, we have fun. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so thank you, Robert. Somebody say yes. Looking over the shoulder. Okay, ready for the counter pose. Unwinding, hands behind. If you can lift, see if you can lift up any amount. If you can't, don't worry about it. And lower. And change side. So I got my outside leg. I'm going to take my inside arm, wrap it around. Lift my heart and look. So nice wide legs. So we've done enough churning so we don't have to churn. Um, so Robert, I'm going to have you put your hands behind and just lift your heart. Practice getting your spine long. Press your heels away. Lift your spine up. Lift your heart up. So this is the place that you have to work until you get to the point you're sitting on top of your sitting bones. Once you're on top of your sitting bones with the vertical pelvis, then you can begin to come forward. That's it. So Muktabai, if you're, for, if you're vertical, you can come forward. I can't do it. Okay. Then just go right at your edge and just hang out there. That's the practice. You, you touch the edge, you breathe, and you relax. And then that edge will open. You know, it's just like when you want to get in a room, you knock on the door. And then eventually, if you knock long enough, someone will let you in. It's just the same way with your body. Instead of, and instead of knocking, though, we breathe. Okay, coming up, grabbing the inner knee. 
coming out. And lying back for Shavasana. If you want to bring your heels in, you can't. 